Hello YouTube and automation friends, Dennis here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I will show you guys how to build a smart personal assistant with NADM. When I think about a personal assistant, I want something that can help me with calendar events, such as finding out what events do I have on certain days or today, or adding new events to the calendar. I can specify what the event is about and how long that appointment or event is gonna be, and it will just add it for me. Another thing that a personal assistant can personally add value to my life is if it can create an email or even respond to an existing email. All of this just by using my voice. So I'm super excited to share an AI agent powered by NNN that will handle all the tasks that I just mentioned. I'll be walking through the entire setup process so you can build it yourself. We will be using Telegram, which you can use solely for free. And I will be covering some notes, including setting up an AI agent, including how to use an expression, as well as how to use uh, some of the basic prompts to handle 99% of the edge cases. If you're not familiar with NNN, NNN is an open source platform or tool for automating your workflows. Uh, it's super handy for building out tools, especially when building out AI agents. I have covered it in a couple of videos already, including how to run it for free in the cloud. If you haven't installed it, I highly encourage that you watch my NNN installation video first, then come back to this so you can build it with me. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer and I make contents on coding, AI and automation. All right, so for this demonstration today, I wanna to be able to showcase uh, a few things to showcase what the AI personal assistant is capable of. So I wanna run through a few scenarios and edge cases. So the first thing is pertaining to the Google Calendar. So I have a Google Calendar set up here with all these events uh, for today's date. I want to be able to run through and find out what are the events for the current date. The next thing that I want to be able to test out is I want to be able to schedule an appointment based on the holiday. So if I say that I want to make an appointment or schedule an appointment for a certain date, let's say I want to schedule an appointment during uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas, you should be able to figure out the date based on the current years and not next year or the previous year. Since we're setting the context for the AI agent using the current date and time, it should be able to figure out the holiday that we're asking for. So we should be able to do that. The third thing I also want to test out is I shouldn't be able to schedule an event for an existing event for that specific date and time. So I shouldn't be able to add another date and time and have a scheduling conflict. So that's going to be the third one that I want to make sure that it passed. And the fourth one is pertaining sending an email and replying to an email. So, so for the email, I want to be able to get all the emails based on a date, time and range. And then based on those emails, I should be able to respond or reply to any of those conversations. Those are the five things that I want to test out and showcase today. But the scheduling assistant or the personal assistant will also be able to handle new emails. So if you want to send an email to a certain person, a certain email address, you should be able to do that as well using this AI personal assistant. Let's go ahead and get started with this. So I have the bot already here on the right hand side of the screen and then on the left hand side i'm going to go ahead and switch to the calendar so you can see what's happening so as far as the bot is concerned i will be able to either send a voice message or a text message so i'm going to go ahead and start and send a voice message using my phone and i'm going to go ahead and send it to the bot so what are the events for today and i'm going to go ahead and send that and that will send the message to the bot So you can see here that you responded with three events for today. So it matches what's in the calendar, the birthday celebration at noon, and then meeting with Sam from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, and then birthday party from 5.15 p.m. to 6.15 uh, p.m. It also includes the event link, which you'll be able to click and it will take you straight to that calendar event, which is nice. Which is nice. So the next thing that I want to be able to uh, showcase here is I want to be able to schedule an appointment. So for this one, I'm going to be using a text message and I'm going to be sending a text message to the bot. And I'm going to say, can you schedule an appointment on Thanksgiving for an eye appointment at 9 a.m.? So currently right here, I already have one set up. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go ahead and actually set it to, to 10 p.m. Let's go ahead and change it to 10 a.m. instead. Let's see how it works. All 
right? So your eye appointment has been successfully scheduled for Thanksgiving, November 28, 2024 at 10 a.m. You can view the appointment here, which will lead me um, into the actual um, event. And if you look at the calendar here again, you see that the eye appointment has been added uh, for uh, Thanksgiving for November 28 at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. The next thing I want to do here is I want to be able to copy that same date. I want to be able to schedule and, and see if it can handle schedule conflict. So it shouldn't allow me to schedule another event or add an event for that date if there's already something for that date and time. So I'm going to go ahead and resend the same message that I just sent earlier. All right, so you already have an eye appointment scheduled on Thanksgiving, November 28, 2024 at 10 a.m. Therefore, I cannot schedule another appointment at that time. If you need to adjust the time or schedule a different event, please let me know. So I went ahead and intercepted that and didn't allow me to add that calendar event. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to switch to Gmail and, and see if we can get all the emails for a specific date and time range. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the message here. So this is the message that I want to send out to the bot. Give me all the email after October 11th, 2024. So which should include all the emails because all these are anything after October 12th anyway. So it should give me all emails. All right. So you can see here that all the four emails was included here, including the subject from and then the certain snippets about the email and including the one right here, what are we missing? So the next thing I want to showcase here is I want to be able to respond to an existing conversation. So I'm going to be picking one of these email conversations and I'm going to go ahead and reply to it. So I'm going to put here, send a reply to the email. What are we missing from October 12th with I really appreciate the email. And then thanks, Dennis. So I'm going to go ahead and send this. Then it says right here, I have successfully sent your reply to the email titled, what are we missing with the message? I really appreciate the email. Thanks, Dennis. So if you go to sent, I sent a couple of emails already, but you see here that I really appreciate the email. Thanks, Dennis. So the same email that was just sent, I'm going to have to refresh this so you can see the latest one. I should have three here, right? Yeah, zero minutes ago. So it was just sent. So really appreciate the email. Thanks, Dennis. So I was able to add and reply to the email based on what I sent here on the message. And I can also send an email if, for myself as well. So if I do send an email to myself with subject, hey, and message of, so I should be able to send myself an email or I can also send another person an email as well. So I send the email to yourself with the subject K and the message hello world. So if I go back to in my inbox, I should be able to see my inbox with that hey and then hello world. If I want to send another person an email, I can just specify the email address for that person and the message and the subject and it should be good to go and we will send the email for that person. So first thing first is before we go on and build the actual automation, Let's go ahead and examine the workflow real quick and and then so we can kind of see and have a feel of how everything works. First is you're going to have a trigger here using the Telegram trigger. And this is going to be using the message that we're going to be sending the bot. So every time the bot receives a message, we're going to be able to receive it and execute the workflow from here. So that's going to be the trigger to the automation. So the second thing here is when uh, a message has been received, which will come in a few different forms. So the two things that we're going to be looking for uh, when we extract the message is what type of message are we going to receive. So we're going to get either a, te a text or we're going to get a voice message. So first is we're going to be sending this type action. So you see that typing that you see on top of the bot where it's like doing some animation. So that's going to be the typing action here. And simultaneously, it's also going to be parsing that message type. So in parallel, when we send the typing action, we're going to be determining the message type. So I have a switch right here, which will determine if it's a voice or a text. And if it's a voice, it's, it's going to go and download that voice uh, message from Telegram. And then it's going to convert it uh, from audio to text using OpenAI. So, and then gonna, we're going to go here to the section where uh, it says right here, agent duties. So this is the agent part that's going to be powering this whole automation. 
So it, it's going to be accepting the message, whether it's coming from a text or it's coming from a voice. OpenAI is going to be able is going to be able to convert it into actual text, and then from here it will converge. Then we can just grab the input, whatever source it's coming from. So let's go ahead and move to the middle here. So once we get the actual message, we're going to go ahead and send this to the AI agent. And from here, we're going to be using the OpenAI chat model. We're going to be using the GPT-4 Mini for this one. And then we're going to have five different tools that we're going to, we're going to be specifying as far as this AI agent tools. So we're going to have a create calendar event. We're going to have a fetch calendar events and then send you email, reply to email and get email and message. So all these are clearly labeled so you can see what's happening. And it's clearly defined here. If you go to the description, all of these have their actual description. I'm going to show you guys in a little bit what the A agent prompt to be able to handle and use the, the proper tool for the message that's been given. And then lastly here, it's going to go and send back a result or send back a message to the, the user, which is me. So that's going to be the entire workflow end to end. And that's what we're going to be building in today's video. Let's go ahead and get started by creating this workflow. So I named it personal assistant and then I have a brand new workflow here. Let's go ahead and get this in center. So the first step is we're going to be adding a trigger here. So we're going to look for a telegram trigger. And then we're going to be looking for a trigger, so which is right here. And then we're going to be looking for on message. So every time the bot gets a new message, we're, we're going to be able to receive it and then respond to that message. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to set up the credentials. So if you haven't uh, set up your credentials yet for your uh, Telegram account, you're going to be clicking on create new credentials. And then there's like a link right here which will open up the documentation and then you can paste your access token here once you've created the access token. So let's go ahead and go through the, the steps here. So if you go to that link, it's going to take you to this page right here. So you're going to have to create your account and you need to log in to your Telegram account. So once you have it set up, you can see here that the API bot access token is supported. And if you scroll, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see here that in order to be able to obtain the access token, you need to start a chat with the bot bother. So you're going to have to download a Telegram client or you're going you're to be able to uh, go to their website. So whatever case may, case may be, you're going to be able to click on this link and it will take you to this run right here, which is going to look like this. So this is going to be the bot father that we're going to have a conversation with. And then what can this bot do? And then it will give some explanation here. And then it's going to give you some commands here, which you can type on the screen to be able to whatever you want to do with this bot. So the, the main thing that we're interested in here is we want to create a new bot. So I typed in slash new bot and then all right, a new bot. How are we going to call it? So we're going to have to pick a name. And then once we have a name, you're going to have to pick a, a unique username for this. So in order to do that, it has to be unique. So if it's already taken, it's going to have you uh, retry and come up with a different username for that bot. So I've named mine Coding Menace Bot. As you can see here, after everything has been created, it's gonna give you congratulations. So it's gonna give you this link, right? Which will allow you to interact with this bot and then you can interact with it and so on and so forth. And if you scroll down uh, more after this message, it's gonna give the access token, which you can then copy and then you can go back into NNN to be able to paste that access token here and click on connect and it should be ready to go and we can listen for events so what we need to do here is we need to test the telegram trigger and we're going to go back here to the bot and i'm going to go back to the bot that i've created here so i'm going to go ahead and clear the history first first i'm going to be sending a text message so i'm going to say hello and as you can see here the output that was given is going to be coming from this message right here. We have a text of hello. So keep in mind that the text is just a regular string underneath this message, which is pretty important. We know that every time we send a text, it's going to be underneath this property, that of a string. And then the next thing that we need to test out here is we want to be able to send a voice message. So let's go ahead and bring back Let's go ahead and do a test step here once again. Let's go and send a voice message. Hello world. 
All right, so we were able to receive a different payload this time inside of message. This time we're gonna get a voice object. So before we have a text property or a string property, now we have a object property here. So something to keep in mind, it, underneath that voice pro property, we have an object here, which contains duration, mime type, the file ID, which we're gonna be using later on to download the file and the file unique ID and the file size. So some attributes for that voice download. So once we have that set up, so we're gonna do perform a couple of actions in parallel here. After we receive the message, we're gonna add a node here and we're gonna look for Telegram once again. And this time we're gonna go and look for send a chat action. And, we're, and this time we're gonna be looking for the typing action, which is default automatically here. So this is gonna be giving it that animation on top of the the application you can see that animation on top so this kind of give you this uh, feedback that something is happening the next thing that we're going to be performing in addition to that is we're going to be adding a separate node that's that's going to be happening in parallel which is actually let's go ahead and set this up properly <laughs> we need to attach a chat id here so going back here you can see that the input will allow us to drag the chat id so underneath the chat and there's an id right here you'll be able to click on and drag and this is going to give us the chat id here so that's going to tie that chat id so to be able to tie that conversation back into the original uh, message all right so that's done the second thing here is we're going to be clicking on this uh, thing again here and we're going to be dragging it to allow us to create a secondary node that we can attach to that trigger so in addition to setting a chat message action we can also determine what type of message that we received. So we're receiving either a text or a voice. So we're gonna be adding a switch statement here. We're gonna go and determine the message type. So we're gonna go ahead and rename this type. And it's gonna be the switch statement. And then first is we're gonna be determining if the voice exists. So we're going to be dragging that voice property here, and then we're going to be changing this to object and we're going to say if it exists. So if this voice object exists, we're going to be going into this output. So we're going to be changing this to voice. And the second routing rule that we're going to be adding here is we're going to be looking for the text. So the text is a type of string. So we can just copy this one right here and inside of the message is going to be a text and instead of checking if that the object exists we're going to be checking if the string is not empty i believe that's what i have it yeah so json message.txt since it's coming from the previous node we can just say json.message.txt so that's from from here we're going to be able to rename the output we can name this to text and we can go ahead and test this step and you can see here, if you close out of this, you can see here that there's two lines that's coming out here. One is the voice and the second is the text. And the green line is going up where the voice is. So you know that it was able to pick up and determine that this was actually a message type of voice. So if I actually run this again, right? So if I run this again and do a test step here, and if I send a message of text, I can just say test. You can see here that now I have a property of text. And if I run, actually, I don't need to do that. I can go ahead and play it here. You can see that the green line now went down to the bottom because now it's able to determine that the text is not empty, right? So it's because it's a string. All right. So now we have two inputs or outputs here. One, so let's go ahead and take care of the voice first since we now we need to download the actual voice that we received from Telegram. Let's go ahead and send a voice here. Hello? All right, so now we got a voice. Let's go ahead and play this again. And then we'll be able to interact with this and add a Telegram node once again. So you're going to have to have uh, something there. So we're going to do a get a file action from Telegram. And then now we're going to be able to uh, grab the file ID that we received from the Telegram bot message. So we're going to go ahead and rename this. Uh, we're going to say download Telegram message. And then we're going to 
keep the file operations as get and then we're going to be using the file id from the previous operation so we're going to be using the file id here we're just going to go ahead and drag that on the screen and then once you have that on the node associated we're going to go ahead and test the step and you should be able to download the actual uh, voice message right so I have the actual file here in oga formats and then with the, the mime type of octet dash stream stream with a file size of 209 all right next thing that we need to do here is we need to be, be able to transcribe that voice that we just downloaded so we're going to be using ai for this to be able to convert the voice into text so we're going to look for open ai we're just going to go ahead and transcribe a recording and using the same data that we receive uh, from the previous one, input data file name is data, which is already set in place. We're just gonna go ahead and test it. And then the output is you. So we're gonna go ahead and rename this. Transcribe message to text. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and center this so you can see everything. So the next thing that we need to do is we need, we need to converge these two lines. So now we have a voice uh, message text and then we have a regular text message. So you wanna be able to converge those ones so both of them will be fed into the actual AI agent. So how are we gonna do that? So we're gonna be adding a node here. We're gonna be looking for edit fields, set, and then we'll be able to do a manual mapping, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do add a field here and I'm going to go ahead and set the name. I named this chat input to be able to send this output into the AI agent. So this is the property that the AI agent is expecting to be able to respond to a request. We're going to name this as chat input and it's going to be a, of a type string. And then for the value, we're going to be switching this to an expression. So from here, I'm going to be copying some expression here. So inside of this expression, Let's go ahead and expand this one so you can see it properly. So you can see here that we're going to be doing a ternary operation where we can check if that voice underneath the, the message exists. Um, if it does exist, we're just going to be using the, the text that we received previously. Otherwise, we're going to be uh, we're going to be pulling uh, the actual text that we received, the regular string uh, from the message uh, trigger. So let's go ahead and get out of this. And we need to connect this to the actual edit field to be able to tie to this. So regardless of which path it goes to, whether it's coming from the transcribe message to text or we're just going to be uh, grabbing the regular text, it needs to be able to go to this one right here. And this is going to be the final destination where the voice message text and this the regular text string is going to be converging. So from here, you will be able to determine which text to apply and send to the AI agent. All right, so we can go ahead and test this by clicking on the edit fields, and then we can change the input, which is, since we're coming from the transcribe message to text, we can go ahead and change the input to come from that. So when we switch to input of transcribe message to text, uh, you can see here the incoming text is gonna be, it's gonna say input or of you, which we're gonna be assigning to chat input. If we then go back and send a text message, it's going to go and give it back the text. We're going to go ahead and uh, rename this to set agent input. And we're going to go and rename this. So the next thing that we need to do here is we need to add a, a agent, which we can find by clicking on advanced AI and then looking for a agent. And then we have to select tools agent so we can add multiple tools to the AI agent and we're going to be taking from the previous node automatically. Although you can also define it below. If you're using the chat input as an incoming parameter, then you'll be able to pick it up automatically. As part of the options, we're going to be using additional options for this AI agent. We're going to be adding a system message, which we're going to be replacing this one right here. And we're going to switch to an expression. So this will allow us to add a JavaScript function or call the JavaScript object for date. So let's go and replace that with this one right here. And I'm going to go and go walk you through what, what this is about. So this is going to be a simple system message that we're sending to the AI agent. We're saying that you are a helpful personal assistant. Make sure to use date.now, which is an expression here that pulls the current date today. 
we're going to be using the current date as the reference point. So we can say that today's date is going to be this. And then this is going to be something that you need to re reference if the date is not specified. So if we have a incoming message that says we need to book an appointment for December, you should be able to determine since we're currently on 2024 or whatever year, it knows which December it needs to create an event for. So if we didn't specify the year anyways, the next thing here is the current year is this, which we're saying that within this expression, the expression is basically when you do a double curly braces, you can say a dollar sign now, and then you can call some functions from this. We're going to extract a month or year or uh, a day. So that's what we're doing here. You can see the result on the right hand side of what that's going to look like if you execute it. So we're just extracting the year from the date. So if you're looking at the prompt right here, you're, you're a helpful personal assistant, make sure to use the current date as today's date to reference if date is not specified. The current year is 2024, just for a reference point. So that's going to be the only thing that we need to specify for the system message when we set up the AA agent. The, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to add a chat model. So for this one, you can add whatever chat model uh, that you want to use. Uh, you can use Anthropic. Um, I'm personally going to be using OpenAI chat model. And I'm going to be using the GPT-4 All Mini for this. And for this, you're going to be needing your OpenAI account. And once you have that, you'll be able to use this OpenAI chat model. After this, we're not going to be setting up the memory, so we're going to skip this. But the next thing that we need set to set up here is the different tools that we're going to need uh, to interact with. Right. So the first tool that we're going to be adding here is the Google Calendar to be able to create the calendar event. So let's go ahead and click on the tool. And then we're going to go ahead and look for a calendar, Google uh, calendar tool. And then from this, you need to create and uh, connect to your account. So for this, you're going to have to create an account. You're going to have to go to your Google account. And then within that, you're going to have to, inside of console.cloud.google.com, you're going to have to create a new project. And then from there, you're going to have to create a new credential and then using OAuth client ID. And then I've gone over this multiple times already, but if you haven't connected your Google account, we're going to have to create a credential here. Once you have the credentials created, you're going to have to copy the client ID and the client secret. And that's what you're going to need to paste into the Google Calendar credentials right here. If you want to set up your Google uh, credentials. So once you got the connection set up, we're going to go ahead and go to the resource, we're going to keep it at event and then operations going to be create since we want to create uh, a calendar event. So we're going to go ahead and name this create calendar event and rename this. All right. So before the start, if we want to create a calendar event, we need to specify the calendar first and then the start and the end date or end date and time. So for this, I'm going to be using expression here. So I'm going to be switched from fix to expression and I'm going to be typing in expression, which I can specify the actual from, I'm going to be using the from AI. So which is a cool function that you can use inside of NNN. From AI will allow you to pull and will have AI be able to determine what type of field or property to use for this particular field. So when you call from AI, you can pass in the name of the property. So from this, I can say start date and time and the function will be able to figure out which property from the previous node to pull the start date and time from, which is kind of nice. So from this, I'm going to go ahead and copy what I have here. So from AI will allow you to say the property that you want to pull out. So you can say start date and time. So this will give you the start date and time. And then you can add a comma here with the actual description, what the actual property is about. So the start date and time of the event. So something like that, it's going to automatically just pull out the start date and time from the previous node. Similarly here for the event, we're going to go ahead and switch to expression here. For the end in time, I went ahead and added this one right here, which we're going to be used that from AI. So go, let's go ahead and expand this real quick. We're going to do a dollar sign from AI and then the name of the property. So this is something that I just made up. This is not something that came from anywhere. So just naming it like this, you'll be able to figure out what type of object or 
you know, property type we're dealing with here. And in the description, it's just going to add additional description so that you'll know exactly what you're looking for, just to describe it a little bit. So, which is optional here. You don't have to add the description. Most of the time, just adding this name right here or the key should be able to allow the AI to just identify what type of property we're looking for. Another thing that we also need to do here is we need to add a summary for that calendar event, which is the title of the event. So we're going to go and look for additional fields here. And then we're going to look for summary. And then for the summary, we're just going to and go ahead and switch to expression once again. So we're going to let AI take over from this and pull the event title automatically without having for us to figure out which node it came from and all that. We can say from AI and then event title, and then this is the title of the event. So simple as that. And the next node, we need to fetch the calendar events. So this is going to help us when it's time for us to create an event and determine if there's any conflict with scheduling. So we're going to go and add a separate node here. Let me push it out of the way. And then we're going to go and look for Google Calendar again. And this time we're going to be looking to get many. And then from the list, we're going to be selecting our account here. We can say return all. You can just limit this to whatever. By using the get or fetch get many operation, you're going to have to set up an option here. So it doesn't pull all the events. You can put a constraint on which dates are going to be pulled as part of this operation. So if you say, I want to get all the events for a certain date, you will be able to narrow down the events that it's going to be pulling based on those start and date. So we're going to go and do a after and before here. For the after, we're going to go and switch to, to an expression again. And this time we're going to be using the start date. And then use the start date time of now. So we're doing a concatenation here. Let's go ahead and expand this real quick. So from AI inside of this expression body, which is curly braces, we're doing a dollar sign from AI. And then the, the key, which is start date, use the start date time of plus now, which I don't think this really matters. The, the main thing that really matters is the system message that we specified inside of a agent to provide the context of the date of what's today. So that's going to be that. So the start date will be the after. So we want to make sure that it's within this time frame. So the next thing that we need to add here is, I believe that's it. So the start date will be this. We don't need to do a before here. So we're just going to go ahead and get many from this account. We're going to limit to 50 with using the start date. So that's going to be that getting the events. Let's go ahead and actually rename this to fetch calendar events. So it's clear what it's doing. And one thing that I forgot to add here is we're going to need to set the tool description. So this is going to allow the AI agent to determine which tool applies to what. So we're going to go ahead and change this to from consume Google Calendar API, which is very generic, to get calendar events from Google Calendar. Same thing here, almost forgot. We're going to go ahead and change to tool description, which is important right here, instead of set automatically. So if you don't set this, it's going to automatically just set it to consume Google Calendar, which is very generic. We're going to go ahead and change, create a calendar event. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add a tool here for sending an email, right? So we have the two calendar tools that we added. Now we're going to be focusing on the email aspect of this. I'm going to go ahead and move this to the side since I can't click on this tool without it being on the way. So we're going to go ahead and go look for Gmail tool. And then from here, we're going to send a new email. So I'm going to rename this to send new email. And then the resource of message, we're going to be, yeah, it's already set to message. And we're going to be set, we're going to set the description here to send a new email using Gmail. And then for the operation, it's going to be the same. The two is we're going to be setting it to two. So we're going, to, we're going to be using that same expression. And actually, we need to switch to expression here first. And then we're going to be pasting this um, expression, which is dollar from AI to email and the recipient of the email as the description. So same thing that we did before. As far as the subject, we're going to go ahead and switch to, to expression once again. And then this time we're going to say that the key is going to be email text subject. And we're not going to be specifying the uh, description for this since it's pretty much self-explanatory. If you have a self-explanatory um, 
key uh, you don't have to specify the description and then for this um for the email type it's going to be html and then for the message we're going to switch to the expression once again so we're just going to let ai take over this and let ai determine who the recipient is what the subject is and what the message is of that email so let's go ahead and rename this and then the from ai again same function that we're going to be using here and then this time we're, we're using the email text body as the key and ai will just automatically just figure out which message we need to to use here all right so we can actually close this out so that's gonna be that for sending an email the next thing that we need to do here is we need to add reply to email so that's gonna be the next thing that we need to add here so let's go ahead and look for the gmail gmail tool and we're going to be looking to instead of send we're going to do a reply here as the operation and we're renaming this to reply to email instead of gmail and then for the tool description instead of set automatically we're going to set this to manual and then we're going to be changing this to reply to an existing email with gmail we're going to be replying to an existing email with gmail and then resources message the operation is reply for this we need to specify the message id which we don't really have any reference to the other tools at this point but we're gonna go ahead and let ai handle this and figure out the message id that we need to use which is pretty cool so i'm pretty stoked about this so from this i can go and switch to the expression so you can kind of see the pattern here. So we're letting AI decide everything for us down to the message, the subject, even the message ID that we're going to be adding it here. So I switched the expression. I'm going to go to expand this so you can see everything uh, clearly. I have a expression body and then I'm using this from AI dollar from AI function, which I'm passing in the key of Gmail email ID. ID should be ID of the email of the email that has been fetched that has been fetched from gmail so it'll be able to tie both of those tools together because it's going to go and fetch the emails first and then it'll be able to associate the id of that message into this field right here so we can go and get out of this so that's going to be that for the message id and then the message type is going to be html similarly and for the message, we're going to go and let AI take over again by switching to expression. And we're going to be pasting in here the expression. So it's going to be from AI and then email text body. And that's going to be that. So I have this tool description. I have the resource operation of reply. I have set the message ID, which is coming from a separate tool inside of AI agent. The last thing that I want to add here, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move this far ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and, and, and move this back once we have everything here because if you click on the plus sign here the only thing that I'm kind of driving me nuts is i can't click on this plus sign without these lines getting in the way so i'm going to go and move that out of the way and we're going to be looking to add the last one which is get gmail emails inbox so we're going to go ahead and add the gmail tool here once again and this time we're going to go and get many so similar to the Google Calendar where we're getting all the events from Google Calendar. So we're going to go ahead and rename this to email in inbox and the resources message. So for, yeah, for the message, we're just going to go and get the messages. And then for the tool description, we're just going to set it manually uh, because we want to specify what uh, this tool is actually going to do. So for this one, it's, it's just going to get email messages from Gmail and then we're just going to get all of them. And then for this one, we're going to go ahead and add a couple of filters. So if you go back to email, if you do a search, you can do a filter. So that's exactly what we're doing. So we don't want to pull down all the emails. We want to pull the email that we care about. So if you want to avoid having to pull from archive or trash or whatever, or, or old emails, depending on what you want to do, you can specify some filter here and you can add it to NNN. So it will only pull the email messages that you care about. So what we're doing here is we're adding a new filter and we're going to do a search and we're going to do in inbox. So it's only going to pull those email messages that's within this filter, which is in inbox. Another thing that we also need to do is we need to add a filter to only grab certain emails. We're, let's go ahead and do a received after and we're also going to be doing a received before so we can narrow the emails that we get so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to switch this to expression once again and let ai take over so received after 
will be anything after a certain date. So that's going to be the start date. So use the start date time of now if the start date is missing. I'm using the expression once again. And then inside of this, I'm using the dollar from AI and then the key. And inside of the description, I'm just doing a concatenation. I don't know if this actually works, but I'm doing a plus today's date and then if start date is missing. So that's going to be adding the received after. For, for the received before, we're going to be adding a expression here once again. So we're going to switch from fixed to expre expression. The end date will be how far in, uh, in the future are we going to be able to, until what date uh, do we need to uh, get the email. So we're going to do an end date. So up to what date, right? So received before and then use the end date time of now if not specified so similar to what we did before in the uh, received after we're going to be using the same uh, type of expression so that's going to be that for uh, all the different uh, tools that we need to do here actually i'm going to go ahead and rename this and i'm going to rename this to get email in inbox and then this one i'm going to name this to reply to email this is just for us so that we know exactly what this tool is doing specifically that doesn't really matter to the AI agent itself so we can clearly see what's happening here so we have a create calendar event we have a fetch calendar event we have a send email and a reply to email and then get email in inbox so all these tools combined will be able to perform actions based on the message that we receive. So whether we want to reply to an email, we'll be able to associate a certain message ID and respond to that. Or if you want to create a calendar and check for conflicts, you'll be able to pull all the calendar events for a certain date and time, and you'll be able to determine if there's a conflict for that date. So all these tools works together to be able to perform the action that you requested or send a message to a chatbot to. All right. So that's last thing that we need to do is we need to send a message back to the person uh, that sent the message. So we're going to go ahead and search a node here. We're going to go and telegram and then we're going to go and look for send a text message. So that's the action that we're going to be using inside of telegram. So we're going to rename this to response and the chat ID is what we're going to be needing to be able to associate this chat message to that chat. So we're going to go ahead and go back into the telegram trigger and then we're going to need to specify the chat ID and the text here. So the, the chat ID will be the chat that we used before. We're just going to go and drag it right here and it's going to be the expression of telegram trigger and then item.json.message.chat.id. So that's going to be the expression. And then for the text, since we're coming from the A agent, the A agent from the previous message will, will give us this output right here. So you can just say, uh, you can say this is coming from this expression right here. And then it, we're going to be using this dollar sign JSON, which is coming from the previous node. And then automatically it will just be able to figure out, okay, the A agent is going to give us this output, right? So this is actually going to be the string that's going to be sent back from the A agent once we get all that response compiled. So that's pretty much it. As far as building this whole automation flow, you can test it out yourself. You can, you can build it out super easy. All right, if you have made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you for sticking around. I hope that this video has been insightful and have provided you with some value. If so, feel free to hit like on this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please consider doing so as I will be doing more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Also, feel free to check out my other videos as well. Other than that, I'll see you guys on the next one.